Hello everyone, this is Sorry and Target welcoming you back to another Top 5 Carnivores video, where today we are going to be taking a look at what I consider to be the most underrated animals in the official Carnivores games. Guys, it has been a long time since we've had a good old Carnivores Top 5 video. Or, you know, a video in general. <laughs> and this is actually one I've been wanting to make for a while now. So I finally had some free time and thought, hey, why not put this thing together? So today we are going to be looking at what I think are the most underrated animals in the Carnivore series. The ones that people overlook or neglect or just don't care about that really have made some significant contributions to the franchise, from modding to world building and anything in between. And remember, I am not the final authority on all things Carnivores. So if you have some better picks, be sure to let me know in the comment section below. So without further ado, let's begin. Topping off our list at number 5, we have the infamously divisive Chasmosaurus. Now, I can already hear some of you thinking, Comrade Sarian, you hate Chasmosaurus. Why is least favorite dinosaur on top 5 underrated list? And that is an oh so valid question, my valued comrade. But the Chasmosaurus is on this list not so much for what it does for me, but what it's done for the community. Yeah, the Chasmosaurus model breaks the canon style, rejects a beautiful design by Burian himself, and feels like a needless apology for the outdated design of the Triceratops. But in the wake of all that, the Chasmosaurus has presented the community with an easy to read UV map and a model that is very easy to edit without completely distorting it which has allowed the fans to create some amazing Ceratopsians from its base. Thanks to this divisive Ceratopsian, we have plenty of others, many of which we've showcased here on the channel, like Diablo Ceratops, Styracosaurus, and of course, my personal favorite, Mojo Ceratops. Not only that, but the Chasmosaurus texture has been used in plenty of other custom animals since then, making its overall impact on the legacy of carnivores a subtle one but more powerful than many other, more beloved animals. In the context of the official games, the Chasmosaurus may have been a disappointment to some, myself included, but it's been an undeniably important part of creating the rich community canon we know and love. So it comes in at number 5. Moving down to the number 4 spot, we have the iconic Velociraptor. Now, some of you might be wondering, what? The Velociraptor? It's one of the most iconic and well-known dinosaurs in all of carnivores. Why is it on a top 5 underrated list? And that's a very legitimate concern, oh ye intellectual, because the Velociraptor is one of the most well-known dinosaurs, not just in carnivores, but in the entire world. But in carnivores, I think its role in helping bridge the gap between modern dinosaur interpretations and the classic canon style designs is what goes unnoticed and what I think it deserves recognition for. The carnivore style is obviously based on outdated paleo art depictions, with these being alien dinosaurs that evolved differently than their Earth counterparts. Zdenyak Burian's artwork is the definitive canon standard for these alien dinosaurs. But the predators of the dinosaur planet, specifically, adopt more of a Jurassic Park build pressed through a Burian textured filter, especially the Velociraptor. The carnivore's Velociraptor is clearly based on the male tiger-striped Velociraptors from the Lost World Jurassic Park. But as we've stated before many times here on the channel, Directly ripping off other modern sources is not good, because 9 times out of 10, the designs will not look like they belong in carnivores. This is what Tatum has been struggling to get right for years. If you directly port the Lost World's Velociraptor into a 1990s computer game, it's not going to look like this, it'll look like this. Now some of you might be thinking, Oh yeah, I can totally see that in carnivores. Well, for me personally, I can't. It needs that Burian filter to really blend in with the rest of the world, and that's what the Velociraptor gives us and why it makes this list. 
It's a reference on how to take modern dinosaur designs and turn them into proper carnivores animals. This is a dinosaur Tatum should have looked to eight years ago as a guide on how to turn modern paleo art into a carnivore's appropriate dinosaur. If they really wanted to make the Dinosaur Hunter Utah Raptor look like Mr. Constantinops, hey, that's fine. It's a cool design. But pronate the hands, straighten the neck, beef up the limbs, roughen the texture, and remove the feathers. Basically, make it look like it belongs in Burian's artwork, not Constantinops. The Velociraptor is important because it shows us how to take popular or modern dinosaur designs and turn them into carnivores appropriate designs. And I don't think it gets enough credit for that, so it comes in at number 4. Taking the number 3 spot is the massive Bronto Terry. The start of Dino Hunt Corp's Arctic Sector Tour, I think the Bronto Terry is underrated simply because it's an iconic and well-designed prehistoric mammal that stands out in what is ultimately a pretty lackluster hunting roster. In a lineup full of contextually, uh, boring modern-day animals, the Bronto Terry is a strong novice rank entry to kick off Ice Age and keep momentum until the Smilodon and Mammoth arrive. But I think a stronger reason for the Bronto Terry's uncredited importance is that it gives us official lore expansion references on Dino Hunt's marketing strategies and redesigning animals to fit foreign environments. As I've tried to clarify so many times here on the channel, the animals of the Carnivores universe are not the real extinct megafauna they are named after. They're aliens that resemble the extinct creatures of our planet's past, and for marketing reasons are named as such, either based on appearances or roles in the environment. But the Bronto Terry gives us a little creative green light in alterations to designing and naming creatures to better fit the alien aspect of planet FMMUV32. The Bronto Terry is clearly based on the extinct Brontothere animal group, specifically Megacerops. But instead of being called Brontotherium, like many would expect, the animal is called Bronto Terry, which, if memory serves, is either a Ukrainian or Russian alteration of the Therium suffix, which has ties to action forms Ukrainian heritage and helps separate Bronto Terry from the real animal. Another distinction between the two animals is the Bronto Terry's shaggy fur coat, as the earth animal was likely covered in hard, rhinoceros-like skin. This gives us a great example of altering appearances to best fit the theme of the game. Brontotheres, like Megacerops, would not do well in such frigid environments, but for better or worse, they are colloquially known as Ice Age animals. So to help it better fit the sector it lives in, the Bronto Terry was given a thick coat of fur to help it survive and better fit that generalized Ice Age theme. Unfortunately, this trend of equipping animals who are otherwise unqualified to live in the Ice Age world didn't really continue, but the Bronto Terry's unique name and design helps the animal stand apart from the rest, and it comes in at number 3. Also, as I'm thinking about the Bronto Terry's naming scheme, I feel like it was a huge missed opportunity to call the Indricotherium Indricoteri and give it some shaggy fur, like a mane around the shoulders or something. Hmm, just some food for thought. Taking the penultimate spot at number two are actually a couple of dinosaurs, grouped together for the same reasons. Gallimimus and Pachycephalosaurus. Now, I've allowed these two to share the penultimate spot because they both serve the same function, and I honestly just couldn't decide between the two of them. In reality, the Gallimimus probably offers more with glimpses into predator and prey coevolution, but the Pachy is my favorite carnivore's animal out of the entire original trilogy, so they're both going to be winners today. <laughs> But what they both bring to the table that lands them the number two spot is that they both offer references for animals built in Burian style that neither he nor any of his contemporaries created in their artwork. When designing a new carnivore's animal, step one should always be to check. Did Burian paint it? 
If so, go straight there as the source. Burian's artwork is the carnivore's canon standard, and it should always be the first priority. If he didn't paint the animal, check his contemporaries of the same time or art style. Knight, Harder, Dahlgren, Parker, anyone similar, and then make the necessary adjustments to fit it into the canon style. But what if no classic paleo artist ever designed the dinosaur, or any other animals in its immediate family tree? What then? Well, you look to how the Pachycephalosaurus and Gallimimus are designed. They both represent dinosaur family groups not often represented in classic paleoart depictions, and yet they fit the canon style beautifully for their distinctive builds. Pachycephalosaurus sporting the more vertical build of other large bipedal herbivores, and Gallimimus adopting the more horizontal build and straightened neck and tail of small theropods. The Pachy and Galli give us some excellent points of reference to look for on how to design canon style animals not depicted by the canon standard. And because of their great influence in guiding the designs of several amazing fan-made creatures, they come in at number two. And now, the number one most underrated animal in the entire Carnivores franchise is the newly introduced but oh so important Coelophysis. No, not you. Get. What? A Tatum dinosaur at number one? Saurian, what's wrong with you? Well, hear me out on this one, condescending voice in my head. This isn't the first time Coelophysis has taken the number one spot in a carnivore's top five video. And I think it's deserved it both times because it's just so freaking innovative. And no one talks about it. The Carnivore series has always hinted at pack hunting behavior in the predatory dinosaurs of the planet, but due to time and age and engine limitations, we had to use our imaginations to fill in the gaps where the games just couldn't replicate these behaviors. And then we got it, the Coelophysis, a true pack hunting dinosaur. I mean, this is what we've wanted for such a long time. And we have it in Carnivores. Heck, we've had it since 2014! Dinosaurs that spawn in together and stay together in a little pack. Dinosaurs that flee together as a pack, regroup together, and attack together. Like, I really don't think we give this enough credit. How many other dinosaur games out there have AI that successfully recreates pack hunting in its animals? And not just like on-the-rails pack hunting where the animals stick to preset routes, like random, chaotic pack hunting. Turok? The Isle? Jurassic World Evolution? Off the top of my head, I can't think of any, and I think that says a lot about how important this franchise is. Carnivores has always been at the forefront of innovation for its genres, from open-world hunting environments, to in-depth tracking mechanics, to prey that can flee or fight depending on the situation. And now, cooperative pack hunting AI in its animals. This is something that I think a lot of dinosaur games could take notes from. I know there's a demand for it. Dinosaur behavior in games is more heavily scrutinized than ever before. And with pack hunting now a viable reality in carnivores, the future of the franchise has been open to places we never thought it would be able to go. And for that, Coelophysis takes number one. Alright, so there you go guys, those are the top 5 carnivores animals that I think are pretty underrated for those specific reasons. I know we've all got our own opinions and reasonings on what animals we think go unnoticed all too often, so let me know in the comments section below. Which carnivores animal do you think doesn't get enough attention? Were there any that I missed? Be sure to let me know in the comments section below. And guys, thank you as always for watching and thank you for being so patient. Between two jobs, I literally have like zero free hours on any given day to work on fun stuff like this. But whenever I can, I squeeze in the extra time because I want to keep bringing you guys the best carnivores content on YouTube for as long as I can. Thank you guys for your support and encouragement and understanding. You guys are truly, truly the best. And I will see you guys next time.